do you feel that? The autumn leaves falling from the trees with a cool breeze. Pumpkins coming out the ground, bats flying in the air. People wearing scary costumes, people wearing sexual costumes, and all because it's spooky season! Yeah! Spooky season is best season. I'll say this as many times as I need to. What about Christmas? What about Thanksgiving? What about Valentine's? That's you. That's what you sound like. Shut up. None of those compare to my glorious king, Halloween. Thanks to Halloween, this video is being made. So if you enjoy it, thank Halloween. If you don't enjoy it, I mean, go kick some rocks. Get the hell off this video. So not that long ago, I asked you guys for your scary stories and you guys delivered. By you guys, I mean like 200 plus. There was a lot of scary stories. So every story I put in this video, I thought was interesting and scary enough. If you thought your story was scarier, I probably just didn't get around to it. There were a lot. There were a lot of stories. So two things before we start. One, this video might not be eye candy. It might be ear candy. So I'd recommend you listen to the video instead of watching it. Like listen to it while you draw, play Minecraft, go to sleep. The video is still gonna be edited that's just my recommendation do whatever the fuck you want and t i have something to say after the last story so do with that information what you will other than that let's begin I'm dark, the Luffy profile picture. Anyways, I live in Trinidad, and let's just say it's not a safe place at times. Let me tell you my story. So I was 15 and I traveled for the first time somewhere in the capital of Trinidad. When I'm finished with my business, that's when the scary part happens. So I had to travel back home, but I didn't remember how to do it properly. So I tried to call for help, but my phone has no money on it, so I was screwed. Plus, I was around the ghetto part of the city. So yeah, I started looking for a bus stop. And as I'm looking for this bus stop, I see three ghetto black men on the other side of the road. I started panicking, so I decided to start walking faster, and as I'm starting to walk faster, one of the guys crossed the street. As all this was happening, I saw a bus stop and a bus was heading towards it. I'ma be real, I started running. Luckily, it didn't seem like they were after me, but they were definitely after someone, because 100% I saw a gun. So yeah, I got on the bus safe and reached home. That's it, to be honest. I know it ain't that scary, but it was for me. My story name is Ashes, and this is my story. On the 4th of July, me and my family went outside at night to see the fireworks, and we were all having fun, laughing and joking and all that. But then we started to go down a hill that led us to a big park that looks pretty scary at night. But we went towards it anyways. We didn't walk inside the park, we walked around the park. And it was very foggy, so we couldn't see much. And while we were walking, we heard a scream. Not a loud scream, a scream faint enough for us not to care about it. So we kept walking and walking and walking until we saw it. A shooting was happening. People were running away, and the cops came to arrest the people, but they started firing at the cops. We all ran as fast as we could. It was a lot. My sister crying, my mom gasping for air. Luckily, we all made it home alive. My name is Steven Blackson, not my real name, and this is my story. A while ago when I was back in freshman year, me and a few friends decided to stay after school, and we were just roaming around until it got late at night, and it was around 8 p.m. We were bored, then one of us had the idea to start doing ding-dong ditches. Yeah, stupid idea, I know. But at first it was normal, going to house to house, taking turns and running away, but that was until we got to a specific house, and after a while it was my friend's turn to do the knocking. He ends up doing it, but no one opens up the door, and being the daring people we were, we decided to go back and do it again, with no response once again. And that's when my friends decided to dial it up a notch and start throwing rocks. One of the rocks they threw went straight through a window. That's when we decided to actually start running away, as I'm pretty sure that was a crime. But while we were running away, we heard shouting behind us. And from the house of the window we just broke, we saw a man come out swinging a chain chasing after us. I never ran so hard in my life. I legit ran all the way home because I'm black and I ain't trying to die. The end. P.S. I never hung out with those friends again. My name is Daniel Aikman, and this is my story. It was a dark rainy day and I was in the bathroom during my vacation. My mom was in the house next to where I keep my grandma some company. R.I.P. Granny. I was watching a video in the bathroom when all of a sudden, a thunderbolt strikes right behind the bathroom. 
and the Wi-Fi went out, so I couldn't call my mom. I wanted to go out and check on her, but I was too afraid to go out after the near-death experience. When I was about to think of the worst things that could have happened, my mom opened up the door, and she started comforting me, letting me know everyone was fine and no one was in danger. Thank God. DG for drawling guy. I was left alone with my little sister at home while my mom was at the store buying food for a snowstorm that was coming. And well, a few minutes passed while she was gone and we heard a knock at the door. Now me and my sister at this point in our lives are dumbasses and I go open the door. There's this guy and he gives us a bag that smells like food. Me being a fat ass and a dumbass, I take it. Then he takes a picture, which at the time I didn't know DoorDashers took pics of food being delivered. My sister says we never ordered DoorDash. As she says that, there's knocking on the door again but this time more aggressive he was yelling to open up the door me and my sister started to panic so we ran upstairs and hide we started sobbing and our mom wasn't picking up the knocks kept getting angrier and angrier they even started cursing saying things like open up the fucking door about 20 minutes passed and the guy finally says give us the fucking food and that's when i finally realized that they got the order address wrong and i have their food so i went down the stairs full speed grabbed the bag and gave it to them and broke just starts flaming me. You're so stupid. Why would you do that? Can't you see that this isn't yours? Fucking dumbass. Like, bro, I'm eight years old at the time. Like, the fuck? My mom got home like 10 minutes later and asked if we were all right. And we tell her everything. For me, this story was scary, but probably just because I was a little child. My name is Nick. This happened when I was about 15 to 16. My previous house was mostly long, meaning you could see from my room to the end of the house. One night I was asleep and something woke me up. I could hear noise coming from the kitchen, which was pretty far away from my room. Anyways, I saw a person standing there, but I didn't think much of it because my parents would often drink water there. But there was something different this time. The figure was staring directly at me. I quickly went back to sleep thinking that one of my parents saw me, but I couldn't go back to sleep because I felt like someone was watching me. I look again and the figure was still there, staring at me. At this point, I'm freaking out, thinking that it might be an intruder. So I woke up my brother that was sleeping next to me and quietly pointed at the figure, asking him who's that. He said he couldn't see anything, saying I was just tweaking. But then the figure started sprinting towards me and I screamed while putting the cover over my head for maximum defense. My brother tried comforting me, but he was scared also because of my reaction. To this day, I can't explain what happened. Either it was some weird paralysis demon encounter or something more sinister. My name is Z, and last year around September, I was at my cousin's birthday at the beach. I went out far into the water, not realizing how far I was going. When I decided I was tired, I looked back, and the shore was far away. I tried swimming back, but the tide was too strong. Remembering some YouTube videos I saw, I tried staying calm and focusing on staying afloat, but I just started drifting away faster. In a desperate attempt to catch my breath, I swam over to some rocks, holding on to them for what felt like two seconds before noticing a middle-aged man on a surfboard coming to help me. He brought me back to shore, and once I was out the water, I noticed a bunch of bleeding cuts on my arms and legs from holding the rock. The only reason why I wasn't safe sooner is because while I was almost dying, the lifeguards were switching shifts. Crazy, I know. I probably wouldn't be here sharing this story if that guy didn't save me. Here's the ranking of the stories. I know someone out there wanted this. Here you go. As for the special announcement, or whatever the fuck I said at the beginning of this video, you see, there's still a lot of stories. So, if you guys really enjoyed this, if there's a lot of comments, you know the drill. I'll make another video with more of you guys' stories. But, I'm not gonna be the one reading them. One of you guys will be reading them. And the person who reads them will be getting paid by me. What does this mean? How can I read for you? You'll find all that out if you comment and enjoy the video. Speaking of enjoying the video, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, fuck liking, fuck subscribing, comment, hope you enjoy your Halloween, and...